What's up everybody, Alex here, and today I have a Dota Underlords mobile guide for those of you that are just starting to get into the game and would like a beginner's guide and tutorial as to how to play. One thing that I should mention is that as of recording, we are currently in the beta preseason. Therefore, if there's any significant changes to the game or the mobile UI, I'm going to be posting an updated guide in the card above me that will allow you to kind of get up-to-date information if you find this later. Otherwise, it'll be a place where I'll post some guides for you to get better at the game with some advanced build synergy. Energies. The first thing that I'll draw your attention to is on the right, the daily challenges. These are new every single day and allow you to progress your Poto Pass, which is basically the free pass currently available in the beta season. In future seasons, we're going to have a battle pass, which will likely have a paid version as well. And as you progress through the battle pass or the proto pass, you unlock cosmetics that you can equip in your loadout to customize the experience that you have in the game. There's a lot of fun stuff here, so I do encourage you to play, uh, especially with the Proto Pass, because it is currently free for the beta season. If you're new to the game, you're probably interested in how to progress and rank up. Do so by tapping on the Encyclopedia button up here. As you can see, we're currently in the preseason, and the preseason ranks are as follows. Upstart, Grifter, Outlaw, Enforcer, and so on. You start at Upstart, you, uh, you progress through these different ranks as you level up until eventually you can become Lord of the White Spire. That is where we all hope to be. If you want to learn about Heroes and Alliances, you can once again tap on the Encyclopedia button and tap on the Heroes icon. The Heroes are sorted by their tier. The first tier being the most numerous and the, uh, the least rare heroes, followed by the strongest, rarest heroes, the legendaries, at tier 5. If you click on any individual hero, for instance, let's click on Lena here, uh, we'll be greeted with some information about Lena specifically, and I'll break down how that information is to be read. So what we have is we have the name of the hero, and we have the alliances that Lena belongs to, human and mage. From there, we're also greeted with the information about her ultimate ability, Laguna Blade, which is cast when her mana reaches full. The way you read this is that Laguna Blade at 1 star has a cooldown of 10 and a damage of 500. When Lena is 2 stars, the cooldown is 8 seconds and the damage is increased to 750. If Lena is 3 stars, the cooldown is further reduced to 6 seconds and the damage increased to 1200. And you also have an opportunity to view her stats. Here, it gives you a clear indication as to why leveling up your uh, heroes is so important. At 1 star, she has 550 health. She doubles that at 2 stars and doubles it again at 3 stars. Couple that with the reduction and damage increase of her abilities, you can now understand why ranking up your heroes is so important. And it should be clear that the way you rank up your heroes, 3 1 star units create 1 2 star unit and three two-star units create one three-star unit. So be sure to collect your units plenty early so that you can upgrade them later in the game. If you want to learn about individual alliances, tap on the alliances button and pick on anyone you want. Let's pick on Mage here because that's where Lena was. So as you can see, once you click it, it actually shows you all the mages that are currently in the alliance. There are currently seven. And on the left here, it gives you the description of what the mage alliance does if we have three mages on the board at once the enemies get a 40 percent magic resistance reduction which allows us to do 40 percent more damage with our spells if we manage to get six mages on board that is increased to 100 percent or effectively double damage for our mages skills if you're interested in seeing any other alliances all you have to do is select one let's select savage for instance and let's say we want to learn more about the individual enchantress all we have to do is click on the uh, the hero and we're given the same information that we had from Lena before. Pretty helpful. Further, you can learn about items by tapping on the items part. I do encourage you to read through each individual item, which are also tiered, uh, because there is far too many for me to cover right now. Um, the alliance items are perhaps the most interesting. Uh, what they do is they give alliance based bonuses based on what units you have on the board. So pay special attention to those. And finally, the loot rounds. Here you get in, uh, some information on the type of uh, creeps that you'll be fighting throughout the match. Basically every five levels after the first three uh, waves, which are basically your gear up waves. Every five levels, you're going to receive the opportunity to gear up, fight uh, a creep wave, and hopefully get an item that you need to be successful in the game. If you happen to lose to a creep wave, you are offered an item of reduced quality. Don't worry, you still get an item. Now that we have that out of the way, it's time to actually play a game. 
tap on the play button. From there, you're going to have the tutorial. I do suggest you play it. It's really effective at teaching you the very fundamentals of the game. After that, if you want to dive into multiplayer, click this button and you'll be playing against players of similar rank as you. For today, we're going to do a solo bot match. We're actually going to set it to medium and we're going to play at our own pace so I can explain a few fundamentals to you. If you are actually playing on your own, I would suggest you play at the protopass level. The reason for that is because you're going to unlock stages of your protopass, finish daily challenges, and also be playing against AI that will do a better job of preparing you to play against multiplayer players. It's really where you want to be. Alright, let's click on medium and let's load into the game. So we have our bots here. In the first round, we're going to be offered a few different heroes. Let's see what we get. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the anti-mage to start. One thing I'll explain is, let's say that I really liked one of the heroes in particular. Um, and let's say we had a lot of different ones. We could actually lock it so that on the next round, we would be offered the same heroes. Oops, I almost forgot to put them in there. So, let's continue here. So, what you're going to see is our anti-mage is going to fight the first creep wave. Very easy, just be sure to actually drag your unit on. Because we're playing uh, with uh, the player at your own pace mode, we can pause and skip rounds, as not skip rounds, and skip ahead uh, however we want. So we're offered our first item. We're given three options. Now right now, we, uh, we have the opportunity of pausing because we're playing at our own pace, but in a regular game there would be a time limit. So what we're going to want to do is we want to do the embarrassment of riches. This will give us a, a bigger chance of uh, getting uh, more items later in the game. At the first round, embarrass of, embarrassment of riches is a great pick. So once again, I'm looking here. We have an anti-mage, which is great. So we're going to take an anti-mage again because now we have our second anti-mage. But you know what? I'm actually going to take the uh, Tuskar as well. Now, you can see the different alliances up front, but I'm actually going to put Tuskar in up front. He's a savage warrior. We want some warriors, okay? That's going to be one of the fundamentals of our strategy. We're going to keep it pretty simple this game. We're going to tap the uh, play button to continue. And now we're on to our next creep wave. We'll skip ahead here. All right, so we took the creep wave down. Three seconds until round two is resolved. We're going to see our next set of items. All right, so we have a few here. Chainmail. And as you can see now, we have four options because uh, we took Embarrassment of Riches. I'm actually going to take the Move Speed and the Health Regen. Now, we're being offered more units here. Um, all right, Slardar is a warrior. He's also a uh, uh, an uncommon hero. I'm going to take the Slardar here. I'm going to put him on instead. Oh, no, see? Two of three. So we have space for one more. Perfect. Now, our Anti-Mage, we're going to leave on the bench here. Uh, we didn't have the opportunity to get another Anti-Mage. Now, I'm actually going to put the Boots onto our Anti-Mage, and I'm going to position him off to the side so that maybe he'll take a good route to the enemy Spellcasters in future rounds, because we don't have a Blink Dagger yet. So now we have the third Creep Round. With three heroes on board, it should be relatively straightforward. You pretty much don't lose these first three as long as you have a hero out. All right, so now we have a few options here. Now we have we have a savage unit, so we could go with tooth and claw, or we're gonna go with the warrior bonus, which surviving two seconds after a fatal blow. I'm gonna take the warrior bonus because I already said I'd like to do some warrior builds. We have Tiny here, who's gonna complete our warrior bonus. So I'm gonna pick up Tiny. I'm gonna put Tiny on instead of the anti mage, and I'm actually gonna give Tiny our boots as well. The fourth round will be the first round against a real opponent. Let's see how we fare. Now on the right side, you'll see that we are being shown that we have completed the uh, the alliance bonus of the warrior. If we click it, we know that all of our warriors have received a 10 armor bonus. That's pretty significant and it's going to greatly reduce the amount of damage the opposition is doing, which as you can see, they're not doing very much. Perfect. That walrus punch, perfect. Now we won. And as you can see, you see a big string of all the effects and all the results of the other fights and the health should be updated as well. Now here, we'll see that there's a few things going on here. So I'm not going to jump ahead. I want to explain a few things. First, we ranked up. So we have, uh, when you hear that, uh, that sound, that's the level up sound. So now we can add another unit onto the board. We'll add our anti-mage. Further, you'll see that in the store, we have a few options. We see that there's a one-star Tuskar underneath the Tuskar. That tells us that we have one one-star Tuskar already, so picking this guy might help us get to two Tuskars. We don't have any Enchantresses, but it's showing us that by putting this Enchantress on the board, we'll complete the Savage Synergy. So, 
these heroes I'm not particularly interested in having at this point in time. So we'll close it. I'm actually going to sell the anti-mage here and I'll explain why. We're at 9 gold. For every 10 gold we have, we'll get an additional gold for bonus interest. So for instance, at 10 gold, at the start of the round, it'll be calculated that I have 10 gold. So after this is resolved, I'll get one additional gold as interest. If I'm at 20, I'll get two additional gold. 30, 3, and 4, uh, at four, sorry, and 4 at 40 gold. At 50 gold is the max, we get five additional gold pieces. So that's why you see a lot of players kind of managing their economy and not overspending until they get to 50 gold so that they can get the maximum uh, interest bonus. So another win here. And as you'll see, once this round resolves, it'll show us the, um, the base gold, the interest we earned and the victory. And once again, interest is earned at the beginning of each round. Now, we picked up the Tuscar before and now we can see we have two Tuscars, one in the field, one on our bench, and the Tuscar is now growing. Uh, it's sorry glowing he's glowing not growing while well, he grows too so if we click him he automatically merges and updates so once again three Tuscars uh, three one uh, star Tuscars equates to one two star Tuscar okay now we have a few other units here do we want any of them I'm going to pass but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of the way this menu here works this button here allows us to re-roll the shop. And what that does is it gives us a new uh, range of units. Now, one thing that I'll mention is as of this latest patch, the mid-season update, you will not be offered any of the units you are currently being offered when you re-roll. So I will not see a Luna or a Beastmaster or a Sniper or a Chaos Knight. I'll re-roll. Oh, look at that. Anti-Mage. And another Anti-Mage. What an excellent re-roll. So now we have a two-star Anti-Mage who I will give this item to. All right, and our units, so we have a two-star Tuscar and a two-star Anti-Mage. We're in pretty good shape here. This button here allows you to uh, level up. When you level up, you are basically allowed to put additional units on the board. You also get um, opportunity to pick rarer units and you get better items. So let's level up. It costs us five gold for four experience points. Okay, so we leveled up. Now we can put an additional guy on the board. We don't have an additional guy, so I'm going to buy Puck here. And I'm just going to go throw Puck in the corner here. So now we have 5 of 5. One thing I'll also show is that if you tap here on the percentage button, based on the current level you're at, this is an explanation as to what the odds are for you to get different tiers of heroes. As you can see, at our current level, we're not going to get the legendary heroes, and it's very rare for us to get an epic tier 4 hero. This here is basically just your alliances and your uh, information sheet. Super helpful if you're still learning the game. And finally, this again helps lock the interface. We wouldn't want to do this now. We don't want Axe and we don't want Orgrim Magi. We want new heroes on the onset of this next match. So as the battle's happening, what you can do is you can select this middle button here and it'll actually give you real-time statistics on how your team's doing. So for instance, Puck is not doing much damage. Well, he is now. So green is auto attack damage and the blue is their magic damage. There's another color, it's like a darker purple blue that basically illustrates the item damage being done. So if you have like, um, you know, a, a Daedalus that's doing crit and extra bonus damage, you'll see that there as well. So we're being offered additional units. I'm actually going to take Lycan here. So he's a rare unit and look how he synergizes. He completes our savage synergy and adds one more to our warrior. Now here's what I would do. So I'm going to sell Tiny and I'm going to put Lycan in. That not only gave us um, our synergy with our warrior still, but it also gave us our savage synergy, which increases all of our allies damage by 10. All right, so let's see how we do. As you can see, our anti-mage is doing a lot of damage there. Our anti-mage is burning the uh, the mana of that, uh, that puck and also doing that damage back to them. At any point in time, you can select a unit and it'll give you detailed statistics as to what they're doing and how their, uh, their skills work. One thing I'll also mention on the UI right as soon as this resolves here. Let's pick from the store first, then I'll, I'll mention what I want to mention. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, we have an epic. Not gonna go with the epic yet, because the alchemist isn't a good fit for us. We'll stay with the Slardar. Now, what I'll do here is I'll show you this button right here. If you tap this button, it brings up all the information on all the players. It brings up their health, their information, their rank, the win streak, their net worth, which is basically the amount of money that they've accrued without re-rolling the roster, 
So that's basically who's who's out on the field for them, the items that they're wearing, the alliances that are being represented f uh, fully right now, and slightly partially if you have kind of one of the stages complete, the items, the global items in effect, and finally what's on the bench. You would use this screen because one thing that is not made clear in this game is that the heroes being offered, they're being offered in a shared pool. That means if everyone's picking Alchemist, eventually Alchemist will run out. Legendaries, there's only 10 legendaries uh, per uh, legendary to choose from. So not everyone can pick them and level them up. Um, with the first tier, there's 45 of each hero. So there's lots of them. They're easier to get to uh, rank, uh, rank 3 or 3 star. But they are in a shared pool, so... Be aware of that. So if everyone, if you click this button, you see that, like, for instance here, Lycan, Lycan, uh, another Lycan down there. That tells me that Lycan is being really contested right now. It's unlikely, or if anything, harder for me to rank him up. He's a rare hero, and everyone else is using him as well. So keeping an eye on this screen can be beneficial for your scouting. Same thing with Puck. I see that uh, this guy has Puck here. No one else does, so it's not a big deal. But if I saw Puck all over the place, I would know that maybe I need to drop Puck, not use him, because it's going to be much harder for me to, to get him ranked up in stars. One thing that I'll mention that might not be completely obvious is if you tap on your hero portrait, you're given the opportunity to emote. Uh, for instance, if I want to say RNG hates me, I just tap that and it'll say RNG hates me. And if I hit this button, it'll also make a kind of an emote effect as well. Just a fun thing for you to know. Um, as I said, the board can be changed in the loadout menu with the proto pass and the battle pass when it eventually comes out. Um, you, as you can see, we have lots of different, uh, different alliances, but when we start the play, the alliances that are complete are the ones that show and none of the other ones. Our items that are in effect are here, and as, as I said before, we can keep track of the amount of damage that we are doing. Now, um, one thing I will mention is, as we come to a conclusion on this general guide, is if you have any other questions, please post them in the comments. Honestly, I would love to hear from you, and I'll be happy to answer any of the questions you have. Uh, this is a complicated game to get started with, and I really do encourage you to ask questions if you have them. So here's our first intermission here. As you can see, we're getting interest. We have a winning streak going. We have options for new heroes. I'm actually going to take Doom here. Doom is a fantastic hero. I'm going to sell off my Shadow Fiend. So what you do to sell a unit... I should have mentioned that! How did I not mention you can sell units? So basically, the one thing about this game is never shy away from buying a unit. Uh, because when you buy them, you can sell them for the exact same value. There's no money lost. Shadow Fiend cost 3 gold, and now I can take them, drag them to this little bucket icon, and sell them for 3 gold. Now with that extra money, I have 25. I can click here, invest in the upgrade, and still be in the interest threshold for 2 gold at the start of the next, uh, next round. The interest is done there. Now this round is actually pretty hard in the current state of the game. Um, I should mention that if you lose a neutral bout, which is entirely possible, I bet you a lot of people do lose them very frequently, um, the way it works is that you are still offered an item, you're just offered an item of reduced quality. Um, so you get one that's weaker than what you would have had if you had won. So let's see what we get. Look at this, everyone's getting defeated. Oh, see I told you, don't take the win for granted. Alright, so we have a lot of warriors here. Do we want an extra two seconds of survivability? Or do we want the savage um, stack? You know what? I'm going to take unstoppable. And as you can see here, it actually stacks. So if it's being offered to you more than once, it's stacking. Take it more than once if you want it. Okay. Now I believe I saw a glowing slardar, which means that once again, we can upgrade our slardar to level 2. So basically, it greatly reduces enemy armor for 20 seconds, a 3 uh, second cooldown which doesn't change, but wow, that's a lot of armor negative. That's basically a lot of bonus damage. And that brings this guide to an end. I hope that you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever. I'd be happy to help you. Take care and have a fun time in Dota Underlords.